Let's continue talking about graphs and we're going to talk about circle graphs which are useful in comparing things that are part of the same whole. Oftentimes they're used for budgets and sometimes we call these pie charts. And let's say we have, uh, let's say our housing is 25% uh, of our budget and let's say food is 60% uh, of our budget. We eat a lot. And uh, other is 15% of our budget. Now there will be one of these on the test and I'll just show you uh, what would be expected. First of all, we want to draw a circle and I will probably have the circle already drawn on the test so you won't have to worry. <laughs> now, uh, every line that's part of a circle graph is a radius of the circle, meaning it comes out of the center of the circle. All right. So, and we always start at 12 o'clock. So the first line that we draw is from the center to the top of the circle. Then typically we start our segment from there. Now it doesn't really matter what order you do these in, but I would suggest doing the biggest one first. Now, I'm not going to measure with a protractor and make sure you have it exactly, as long as it's reasonable. So I'm looking at this 60% and I'm saying, is that more than half or less than half? 60% is more than half, isn't it? Because 50% is half. So 60% is going to be more than half, but less than three-fourths, which is 75%. So somewhere in here, that would be a reasonable 60% food, wouldn't it? It's more than half, it's less than three-fourths. So as long as it's reasonable, I would give you full credit for it. Then I'm going to take my second biggest one. Oh, that's easy, isn't it? 25% is an exact quarter. So I'm going to start it this way and get myself an exact quarter of a circle. So I know I got that one exactly right or very, very close. And then I'm just going to slap the third one in the spot that's left and call it the 15%. So we want to make sure that we start one of the lines is always the 12 o'clock line. We want everything to come out of the center of the circle and we want them to be reasonably accurate. Now the other thing that we want to be able to do is say how many degrees of the circle would be allotted to each of these slices of the pie. And that may be, uh, now again, most of these things are done on computer. We don't sit around with a protractor and measure off 120 degrees or that sort of thing. How many degrees are in a full circle? 360 degrees in a full circle. So we say, if I want 60% of that, what does the word of mean? Oops, that's not 360%. It's 360 degrees. I think I'll write out DEG so that I don't accidentally do a percent sign. The word of means multiply, doesn't it? So 60% of that is 60% times that. So I can simply say 360 degrees times 60%. That's going to tell me how many degrees this angle is. 216. 216 degrees. So if I got out a protractor and measured, 180 would be halfway. That would be 260 degrees if I wanted it to be exact. Then I would do the same thing with the other percentages. I've got a 25% and I've got a 15%. I would multiply those times 360 degrees. And once we finished, we would want to check ourselves. Our percent should add up to 100%, and our degrees should add up to 360, shouldn't they? Because we're using the entire circle. 